In this video, I will be disassembling the Logitech MX Vertical and this is uh, probably the most unique mice that has came to me for a repair. In this video, I will be disassembling it and will be showing you the procedure of doing it. Actually, this is a pretty heavy mouse and disassembling it is also not easy. First up, you will need to remove the mouse feet, which I have already done. And I have kept the mouse feet nice and safely. These are away from dust. We are going to be reutilizing these. I think this is not going to be easy to find for a lot of people. Maybe it is available in India, but uh, I don't think the replacement feet for this mouse will be available all around the world. Anyway, coming to the disassembly itself, we'll need to remove uh, one, two, three, four, five screws at the bottom here. So at this point, I have removed all the five screws. And now let's get the bottom part of the mouse. And you should be ensuring that you lift it towards the right because you don't want to damage this ribbon cable. Before you pull this ribbon cable off, you will need to lift this plastic piece up a little from both the sides. You can use your nails or maybe a tool like this. So you'll need to lift this white plastic thing up and only then you can get this cable off. Now we are going to keep this PCB section aside and now I will be removing a lot of screws that are holding uh, the PCB of the mouse. There are actually a lot of screws. And I have removed a total of five screws. And I don't think there are any more screws left to remove from this section of the mouse. And unfortunately, there is still one more screw that I have not yet removed, which is hiding very deep. So I'll have to get it off. So now all the screws are off. It's very hard to grip, especially if you have small nails like the ones I'm having right now. And finally, there we go. So I was able to get this plastic piece off. And now we are faced with a total of four screws that we will need to take off. So now we have access to the scroll wheel, scroll encoder and this scroll wheel assembly. I can see a total of uh, five screws here. One, two, three, four and five. I'm going to remove these five first. So there we go. Now I guess we can lift off the scroll wheel assembly. Yep. And you don't want to mess with this. 
and we have a spring that is also down here maybe this spring goes somewhere here but I'm not sure about it we are going to figure it out later now we can have a look at the main board this is the little PCB thing that is holding the two switches the first switch the left click which is faulty right click I'm going to replace both of them with some high quality Kyle GM 8.01s these are rated for 80 million clicks and these switches are going to make sure that this mouse is not having any click issues for a long time now before I go ahead and remove this PCB and its screws I am going to just flip it around like this and we are going to just unplug this small wire these are really very delicate you should be extremely careful when you know so got it off or maybe it was not necessary to be removed yeah I think it was not needed but anyway I removed it not a problem let's remove all these four screws or maybe there are just two screws now uh, one really important fact that is there is one screw that is hiding beneath this black cable that I need to reveal you can see this little screw there So there we go and now I think the PCB should come loose and before I pull it off I think I'll need to remove this ribbon cable here yeah there are multiple ribbon cables here Sometimes it is hard to tell whether the ribbon cable is going to open up or is going to slide the other way. Yeah, so it is going to open up. And now I can lift off the small PCB that is holding the switches. Now a really important tip that I would like to share here is the fact that this is again a ribbon cable and you should not be leaving it on I think because uh, we are going to heat up the board in the process of removing the switches and this might get damaged it may be just fine but it is better to remove it than to be sorry later so there we go first I'll be removing these two switches and then we are going to assemble everything back together so it should not be a complicated procedure the only challenge I could see here is the fact that this is a really small PCB and it might be a little difficult to work on uh, yeah but I'll see now we are going to need helping hands and you need to be extremely careful when you're handling such small PCBs because these PCBs are very easy to damage so surely I will be having a hard time 
getting the switches off. First, I will be adding some fresh solder to these joints so that they are a little easy to melt. Now, I am going to just pull the switch from the other direction and heat up all three joints at the same time. And that is how you remove the switches. I am also going to ensure to just suck the remaining solder. Ah, yeah, it's actually very difficult because this is a really small PCB. I should be using some solder wick. So we were able to remove the switches and I was also able to clear the holes for the new switch. And to install the new switches, you should be having some solder on your tip first. Get some solder like this, take the switch, put it in place, hold it very flat to the board, just solder one of the points and leave it. And now the switch is in place and you can simply go ahead and solder the remaining two points. So there you go, that is how you solder a new switch in the MX vertical. Now coming to the other switch. And again for this one, I have very little room, but this one should be relatively easy because we have some space to work. As usual, I'm going to add some fresh solder onto these points so that these are easy to melt. And this time I will be using some solder sucker with the help of solder sucker if you can remove some solder then it will be a lot easy to use the wick later so there we go most of the solder is off. Now I can simply use the wick to clean off the remaining. So again, I cleaned off the PCB using some solder wick and some solder sucker. And now it's time to put the new switch onto the PCB. Again, I'm going to add a little bit solder to my iron. We'll align the switch. And I'm going to make sure that I'm holding the switch as flush as possible to the PCB. You should be as parallel as possible to the PCB. And that is it. Now you just need to add a little bit solder to the other two joints. And that is how you install the second switch. Now I need to just clean this PCB a little because we have some black flux residues. I can leave it on just like this too. But yeah, it's better to clean it off. We have a little bit of flux here on this small PCB too. 
this is just isopropyl alcohol that I'm using to clean this is not water so yeah most of the flux is off now I can go ahead and reassemble everything back again we don't need helping hands anymore now there are few important tips that I would like to share before I put this PCB on. Don't forget to just plug in the ribbon cable, probably the most important thing. Just lock it and then just slide this ribbon cable through. And there we go. Just make sure the scroll wheel is rotating as it should and the middle mouse button is also working. Just check it once. At this point, I think we can just go ahead and put the the clicks assembly, I mean. And it should work as expected put the other one too and there we go both clicks working just as expected put on the screws now before I go ahead and do anything else I should just Put this ribbon cable back on there we go now at this point I need to put this plastic piece on Maybe I should. Now all that is needed is to put on all these screws. Now before I put any more screws on, I'm going to test it out. And if everything works just as expected, I am going to put the screws in. And we'll conclude the fix. So that is how you fix the uh, Logitech MX vertical. This seems like a really good well-built mouse but those switches were the problem and we were able to replace them. It's time to test it out. Before you leave the video just to make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. In case you have any questions or queries feel free to post them down in the comment section and if you want me to repair your mouse you can feel free to contact me on the number mentioned on the screen right now. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to talk to you in the next one.